Hello and welcome. I'm Dr Jodie Oakman. Uh, I head the Centre for Ergonomics and Human Factors at La Trobe University. We are a WHO collaborating centre. Our research program uh, in the Centre for Ergonomics and Human Factors has a large focus on the risk management of musculoskeletal disorders. So today I'm going to talk to you about improved risk management of musculoskeletal disorders, the need for a new approach. I'm going to pose and then address three key questions today. What does the research evidence tell us about the causal factors of MSDs? Are there gaps in current strategies used to manage MSDs? And then finally, what are we, what are we doing at La Trobe University to contribute to the knowledge of management of MSDs? Just some background, we are getting older. That's a fact, the population is ageing and people uh, will need to work until we are in our 60s and it has been postulated until we're 70. So this poses a couple of issues. The first being that we need to encourage people to want to work for longer. And this requires quite a shift, but that's not the focus of our, our, my presentation today. The second thing is ensuring that people are able to work for longer. And that ensures that they're not um, exposed to excessive physical or psychosocial hazards over their life course so that they can make choices about uh, their employment up until uh, retirement, the time for retirement. The way we work has undergone transformational change in the past 15 to 20 years. Um, we're now on call, responding to things in our leisure time, sometimes because we have to, and sometimes because we've loosened the boundaries between home and work. This, uh, the impacts of this on health outcomes hasn't been fully explored, but is part of the whole overall picture of management of occupational health um, issues such as MSDs. Now, what are MSDs? The issue of development of MSDs is a pivotal part of the discussion. And in many ways, we try and fit compensation schemes to an injury rather than the other way round. Mostly in musculoskeletal disorders, we're not talking about injuries at a particular point in time event, we're talking about development of a disorder due to exposure over a long period of time to occupational hazards. The issue uh, and complexity is the number of hazards and how they interact, and this makes MSD risk management particularly complex. There are a number of definitions of MSDs, but there is consensus on versions of the following that work-related musculoskeletal disorders affect tendons, tendon sheaths, muscles, nerves, bursae, blood vessels in the body. So how do we know whether it's an injury or a disorder? In many cases, the clinical diagnosis of MSDs is uh, inaccurate. Um, the re reliability often uh, poor, and we know that in recent times there's been uh, a, a bit of publicity around the relationship between MRI scans, X-rays, and the symptoms that people um, people demonstrate. One of the um, uh, issues in occupational health is that we often spend a lot of time to the right of the arrow rather than down the left focusing on the onset of symptoms and trying to target our risk management strategies at that end of the arrow. I'd suggest that prevention activities need to really start uh, well before we see people move into the compensation or claim cycle, which we know um, some people uh, have a lot of trouble getting out of. Perhaps our over-reliance on... Um, on clinical diagnoses can uh, cause us to consider events attributed to the injury in a way that may not be particularly helpful. And particularly when we use these diagnoses to develop our prevention or control activities, this may lead us down a garden path. Mostly MSDs are cumulative in nature. That is, they are the result of exposure to a range of hazards over time. And it's very difficult to attribute one single event. And in fact, evidence would suggest that this is in fact correct. And that what we're seeing is the straw that breaks the camel's back. This model here, this 2001 model, developed um, by the National Research Council and Institute of Medicine, is quite um, a well-known and well-described model in the literature. It was developed after an extensive review by a panel of experts 
um, who reviewed epidemiological evidence uh, around uh, causal factors of musculoskeletal disorders. And we can see here in this model that the influence of both biomechanical hazards, of which we are mostly very familiar with and they're well accepted and well entrenched in our uh, risk management plans for mus uh, reduction of musculoskeletal disorders. Down the bottom, we can see organisational factors and social context, which I've grouped there as psychosocial hazards, uh, which is a commonly used term uh, here. These factors can either independently or, uh, or both uh, influence the, um, uh, the person effects through biomechanical loading, internal loads and physiological responses. This in turn influences internal tolerances and how the body responds to these particular hazards, resulting in um, a range of outcomes, pain, discomfort, leading on to impairment and disability. And of course, on the right are the individual factors, um, age, gender, uh, different capacities. These are largely outside the sphere of influence of uh, workplaces. And so our prevention activities really need to focus on uh, the workplace factors. This tells the same story as the last one, but highlights separate but interacting causal mechanisms. We can see here that uh, the psychosocial hazards and the biomechanical hazards can both influence uh, the um, uh, cumulative tissue damage uh, resulting in um, presentation of injury. In our work of at uh, this model in 2014 takes into account uh, both of these models and we use this conceptual framework to underpin our research here at La Trobe which uh, is um, heavily uh, focused on, um, on uh, risk management of workplace MSDs. Um, so we can see here that what we're, what we're seeing is this match between or poor match between individual factors, uh, those work-related abilities and skills, uh, personality, genetic vulnerabilities, and the workplace factors. So those psychosocial factors, organisational factors, and physical loads. When these are not well matched, so we have... Um, a demand capacity imbalance, we see that uh, we get effects within the person. So high biomechanical loads, we get a stress response, fatigue, reduced internal tolerance, resulting in tissue damage and or pain. Workplace hazard categories can be you know, broadly grouped as manual handling hazards, which are focused at, on, on the task, or psychosocial hazards. And there are two groups of these. One is the organisational factors, which are around the organisation of work uh, and job design. And then there's the social context, the support, the communications, the relationships with managers. Many, uh, there's some examples of organisational and social context uh, hazards. Organisational hazards can be around working hours, workloads, how jobs are designed, levels of control for individuals, pace of work, conflicting work demands. Social context is around communications with management, the value of individuals, health and safety culture, relationships with colleagues and supervisors. Many organisational hazards are actually the responsibility of managers and supervisors. They arise from how work is organised and job designed there is an overlap between these two groups. Managers and supervisors play a key role in creating these hazards, but also in developing effective controls. MSD risk is determined by many hazards, organisational and psychosocial, uh, and these interact or are additive. But we're still faced with uh, a big question by many uh, people. Aren't manual ha handling hazards the main problem? That is, isn't it the physical aspects of work that are primarily responsible for the development of musculoskeletal disorders? In the literature, of which there is a large, a substantial body of evidence to support the role of both physical and psychosocial factors, this particular paper by Johnson et al. was uh, focused on retail material handlers. So very physically orientated job 
large population, 6,311. Good study design. And what they found was that what these odds ratio is predictors of new back pain. And we can see there that job intensity uh, had a uh, odds ratio of 1.8 or pr predictive ratio of 1.8 compared to the lifting, the physical aspects of the work, 20 pounds at work. So uh, in summary, the psychosocial factors were at least or even more so uh, influential on the development of new back pain. In this review, really uh, it was a systematic review of a large number of papers, about 50, uh, which they undertook statistic, rigorous statistical an analysis to examine the impact of psychosocial factors on MSD development. And so what they found was that, again, looking at these odds ratios or predictors of the likelihood of developing uh, low back pain, was that high job demands were... Um, had a higher um, uh, likelihood than uh, low job satisfaction um, or supervisor support or low social support, although they're fairly close. But the key message here is that these factors were important in determining new uh, cases of low back pain. I don't think it's helpful to focus uh, particularly on the numbers, but just that both factors are, are important. Both, uh, both psychosocial and physical factors are important. In Australia, uh, more specifically at La Trobe University, we've had a long-standing research program on musculoskeletal disorders beginning um, in, uh, in 2003 was the first uh, piece of work. Uh, but here we can see in 2006, we started with a review up until 2015, where we're currently working on um, a project looking at workplace barriers to reduce the incidence of musculoskeletal and mental health disorders. Uh, in addition to that, we're currently working on an intervention project in the aged care sector to look at new ways to reduce risks associated with MSDs. And more locally, uh, in, in our work, we found that taking together a number of studies in healthcare, manufacturing, logistics, when we start looking at uh, those odds ratios or predictive um, um, contributions is a good way to describe these, contributions to increasing MSD risk, we see that physical and psychosocial hazards uh, contribute very similar uh, similarly to increased MSD risk and low job satisfaction equally makes a contribution to the increased likelihood of developing a musculoskeletal disorder. So in terms of MSD risk management, it's clear assessment and management of psychosocial hazards is essential. It's not optional. There is sufficient evidence and sufficient good quality evidence to support the role of both physical and psychosocial factors. In addition, the severity of exposure to any single hazard isn't necessarily a good, good indicator of overall MSD risk. So, and the output of tools for assessing adverse postures and biomechanical loads indicates severity or riskiness of the particular hazards. It doesn't necessarily indicate overall MSD risk because they often take a very narrow focus rather than looking at the job as a whole. There are a number of barriers to improving current workplace practices for reducing um, MSD risk or um, prevention of MSDs. We still have a, uh, an ongoing widespread erroneous belief that MSD risk is largely due to physical hazard exposures. Um, many of the guidance materials that we use still focus on the physical aspects of work, including the sorts of tools um, that we use to identify and uh, control um, hazards and risks associated with MSDs. The conventional OHS risk management paradigm that we, uh, that we use doesn't necessarily help us to develop and promote effective risk management for MSDs. Um, it tends to be uh, separate, quite, quite, operate quite separately to other um, business management strategies and procedures. And it would be beneficial to see these better, in, uh, better in, 
uh, integrated. One of the issues is this focus on hazard by hazard uh, rather than looking more holistically at all the factors, so rather than taking into account the job as a whole. And you'll see there an example of perhaps uh, a moderate force for pushing a trolley. Um, it might be a problem if it's done a lot uh, and there is a lot of time pressure associated with the job. But if it's done only occasionally and without uh, time pressure, it may not be a problem. So we need to be much better at looking at uh, the contextual um, factors around particular tasks that individuals are, are undertaking. In addition, our conventional aim in, in terms of eliminating or reducing hazards isn't always appropriate. Sometimes physical hazards shouldn't be always eliminated. Workloads should not always be minimised. We know that people having interesting, challenging work is actually good for them and that work without challenge is actually uh, hazardous in itself. So we need expansion of our standard risk management paradigm and there's a parallel here with the approach needed to reduce the risk of major accidents. And I quote here... Um, or I uh, take a quote here from James Reason, who argued that errors are like mosquitoes. You can swat, swat them one by one, but they still keep coming. Uh, this is analogous to MSD hazards, and they're a bit like human error, that you can uh, swat them one by one, but it's not the most effective way to reduce risk. We need MSD risk management tools and associated guidance that covers both physical and psychosocial hazards and it encourages a high level of worker participation. We know and encourage worker consultation, um, but we need to encourage participation in terms of uh, risk management for MSDs. It needs to include appropriate assessment methods and advice on how to develop appropriate controls for both physical and psychosocial hazards. At La Trobe University, we have been uh, developing an MSD's risk management toolkit over the past number of years. We are currently uh, implementing this uh, toolkit in the aged care sector and testing various aspects of the implementation process. It very much, the toolkit, follows a standard risk management uh, process with some key differences to address these identified gaps in um, current practices. So it's highly participative, involving the gathering of a risk management team and collation of available data on MSDs. It involves education of management and supervisors in what are all the, the relevant um, uh, associated factors with increased MSD risk, physical and psychosocial. A key plank of this risk management toolkit is the use of staff survey results, which measure both hazards in um, the psychosocial workspace and the physical workspace. And these are helped to develop a hazard and risk profile. These are then developed, uh, used to develop risk controls with the risk management team. Of course, then there's an implementation phase and a review and evaluate phase consistent with uh, a risk management cycle. The uh, toolkit is, um, has been developed uh, under the guise of the WHO framework for all toolkits, which involves a um, uh, based, which is based on the WHO healthy workplace model. The toolkit is currently being tested in the aged care sector, as I said before, and we're working to customise the toolkit to their existing OHS management systems. It'll be interactive, allowing users to customise um, as they need and enter their own workplace data. Future work from our end will involve implementation and evaluation and comparison of data across different sectors. So, we come back to the three questions that I posed at the beginning of the presentation. What does the research evidence tell us about the causal factors today? I hope that from the presentation today, you can see that there is very strong evidence to support the role of physical and psychosocial factors in the development of MSDs, that identification and um, of both physical and psychosocial factors is not optional, but mandatory if we're to effectively develop uh, risk controls for MSDs. 
Are there gaps in current strategies used to manage MSDs? I think, uh, I hope again that you see from the presentation today that there are, that we currently still focus on the physical aspects of work, predominantly um, in the management of MSDs. And I would suggest that this is in part why we find perhaps difficult at, at times to significantly reduce the large numbers of MSDs. And thirdly, what are we doing at La Trobe University to contribute to knowledge of management of MSDs? Well, we've been working over the last uh, 10 to 15 years to um, help, uh, help further that evidence base and then really working on translation, taking that uh, research out into practice to develop more effective uh, materials and supports to help organisations manage um, their MSDs more effectively. So... I thank you today for listening to this presentation. And if you're interested in further discussion, there are my uh, details. We, we will be uh, seeking partners in the coming year to work further on implementing uh, the toolkit in a range of different organisations. And we welcome discussions about potential partnerships. And if you're interested in learning more, we have a short course um, coming up called Health and Design of Work. And we also offer a graduate certificate of Masters or Masters in Ergonomics, Safety and Health at La Trobe University. Thank you very much.